These are the blades of our lives. The figure skating show where I talk to you about figure skating like it is drama for our mama. On today's episode, we are finally at the end of the Grand Prix series. Well, not at the end because we still have to have the finals, but at least we have a two-week break before we have the final. So the last leg of the Grand Prix final was in Finland, Espo. And I have to say, guys, I loved it. I enjoyed it so much. And I know I keep saying this over and over again. The fairness, the clear judging, the not knowing, the surprise aspect, the fact that anyone can win. I love it so much. This is the figure skating that I have missed that we have not had for, I don't know, the past eight years. This is like, yes, even before the E30 bonus, the Russian white envelope purchasing era, you still had political judging. You still had corruption, but it wasn't to the extent where you could telegraph your podium five months in advance. It wasn't to the point where you know whether a skater missed out on their entire triple, triple pass, they would still end up on the podium. We we had never reached that level. And when we reached that level, there was a level of disgust in my spirit for the sport. And now I feel like my spirit is being cured. It's being healed. And now I don't know who's going to win. And I love it. Guys, nothing makes me happier than a figure skating surprise outcome. But anyways, going to Espo, starting with the men. Again, what a very nice men competition. Very, very nice men competition. Um, We had, you know, Cadman on Polkanen. Not great here, but not atrocious. Then I think, what does America really have? They have Ilya Melanin. And maybe Jason, if he comes back and is up to international levels, but really all, all they have right now is Ilya. So (laughs) he's not good, but he's not awful. So I definitely think Cadman Kemden is going to worlds. I don't really see a scenario where he doesn't go to world. Unless Camden really just poo-poos it at nationals. If he can be semi-clean, I say we send him. And my problem with Camden is, oh my God, is he the kind of skater that I like, that I want to root for? Because he has everything, line, posture, projection, musicality. This skater has everything except consistency. And it's not like he's a skater that cannot do the jumps. He's just a skater that cannot deliver consistently the jumps that he's technically capable of. So at this point, it's it, let's just send him to world because the U.S. has nothing else. Um, Japan, again, what an embarrassment of riches. Even their juniors transitioning to seniors are making a statement in the men's competition. Um, Tatsuya Saboy, what a wonderful senior debut for him. What a wonderful senior debut. That long program, he literally did everything that he could. And what nice landing he has. Nice, soft Japanese knee bend and ride out. I feel like Japan just keeps churning out these men and women skaters like it's nothing, while the rest of the world is literally a dry desert. Like, Japan is the oasis of skating, and the rest of the world is just dying. And then, of course, one of my favorite, one of the skaters I'm constantly lighting candles for, one of the skaters I'm constantly praying to the skating gods for, Kevin Amos, unique point of view, personality, originality, skating that you want to watch over and 
over again, where the technical and the artistic meet. When we say figure skating is an artistic sport, Kevin Amos is that artistic part and form. Technically, not quite there, but oh, the movement, the short program, I love that short program. I love that short program. One of my favorite short program this season. The long program, again, uniquely Kevin. This is his vision, his point of view. And I really hope, you know, he heals and he gets back the pot. Because when I look at what we have going on in Europe, why not put Kevin Amos on that podium at Europeans? Why not give Kevin Amos that European medal. I am ready to give it to him. Then we had Shun Soto, one of my favorite young Japanese skaters from when he was a junior. He unfortunately suffered, suffered a horrible um, shoulder injury that took him out for the entire Olympic um, season. But I'm so happy to see him come back and fight and win the silver medal here, which also guarantees him a spot in the Grand Prix final. Love this skater. Why? Because he is that balance that we desperately need in the sport, where he is aware of the artistic aspect of the sport, and he tries to give you as much as he can, while at the same time maintaining the technical level. Yes, he doesn't have the experience, the maturity to really feel the music, to really project the music, but he still has a program that is complete, that has pauses, that has highs and lows. He still tried to extend. He still tried to give you good spins. He still tried to give you a good step sequence, and he still delivers beautiful quads, clean triple axle. When we talk about the balance between the artistic and the technical, we're talking about Shun Soto. We're talking about Shuma Una. We're talking about these skaters who can put it all together and it looks effortless. Then, of course, the winner of this night was um, Ilya Melanin. Can this kid jump? Absolutely. Technically, if Ilya delivers, no one competing right now, no one competing right now should technically be able to touch him. Even though the quad axle was not clean here, just the fact that he is doing a quad axle plus the countless number of axles that he can do, it clearly says that he technically should not be touched. I am a little concerned about the fact that he always bombs the short program and then has to fight back in the long. But fight, he does. Technically, he does. However, and I'm going to probably be saying this for the duration of this young man's career. However, there is a clear difference between, well, let me rephrase that. There should be a clear difference between the technical score and the component score. If we are being perfectly honest, Ilya Melanin's program, the long program, is a jump drill with a freestyling portion at the end. That is all it is. It is him going from one jump to another, and then he reaches a point where all the jumps is done, and he just freestyle and does whatever he wants. And the fact that the PCs that the judges are giving him is more reflective of his technical component than it is of what's actually happening on the ice is going to be a bone of contention for me for a long time to come. But other than that, this podium was exactly as it should be. The winners, I have no problem with. Ilya win winning here made complete and total sense. Soto coming in second again. My beloved Kevin Amos coming in third. Everyone's scores and standing made perfect sense. Love this man's program. Then we moved on to the ice dance. Oh, my goodness. And again, there was some, you know, that, that bronze medal really was a fight to the finish. 
I really thought there, you know, um, Christina Carrera and Anthony Padomarenko was going to get the job done and bring home that bronze medal. You know, and that would really help them in terms of their fight against Caroline Green and Michael Parson for that third spot in the U.S. Because Michael Parson um, and Caroline Green, they won a bronze medal in the Grand Prix. So if um, Christina and Anthony have been able to duplicate that, then it would have made that matchup that much closer come U.S. Nationals. Unfortunately, the, they had it in the rhythm dance, but then come the free pro, come the free dance, they simply just didn't have enough and they ended up losing it. I feel I feel really bad because this young team is really coming together. Um, this is the first season where I really really liked their program as seniors, so I really wanted them, you know, to make a splash. But our third place winner, who last year was having a great season, was one of the judges' favorite, was um, Julia Tukakilia and Mateus Velus. I'm so happy for this pair because last year they were on such a high. Then you come over to this season and they had such a rough start to their season. And to see them at home, on home ice, really pulling it together and winning the first medal for a Finnish team in ice dance ever. Really, I just, guys, I love me a feel-good story. So coming from fourth to third, winning that bronze medal, they don't have enough point to make it to the Grand Prix. This wasn't even about them making it to the Grand Prix. It was just them redeeming themselves and now preparing for Europeans. Now they're going into Europeans with a much better outlook than they had this entire season. And then for me, my favorite pair of this event was um, Caitlin Hawaiik and Jean-Luc Baker. Personally, this is personally, I prefer Caitlin and Jean-Luc's programs, period. I love, I love the I Love Lucy theme to their short dance to their rhythm dance, and they sell it with so much fun. They are so invested in it that I'm invested in it. I don't know about anybody else, but I personally cha -cha -cha, love it. And then their free dance, honestly, it was the free dance that I found myself most invested in in this competition. It wasn't perfect. They missed some levels. The lifts were a little shaky, but in terms of the overall overall program, in terms of their delivery, in terms of their connection, in terms of their speed, their power, their ice coverage, their flow. Oh, Jean-Luc's knee bend. Oh, oh, that beautiful knee bend. I felt it the most. I felt connected to it the most. And I am really, really now looking forward to them at nationals. Like, I am so excited now for U.S. nationals. And of course, the winner here was um, Piper Gillis and Paul Poirier. I really like their programs, the short and the long, but I don't love it. I want to love it, but I don't love it. And what I feel, this is my personal opinion. You ever see that actor that does one great movie after another, after another, and they never get the Oscar? And then they do a good movie. It's not their best work. It's not their greatest work. But it's a good movie. And then the Oscars are like, we're going to give you the Oscar for this good movie that you did. But it's more for like commute, like your cumulative effort. That's sort of like what I feel about Piper and Paul this season. I feel like for years, this team was original. They were fresh. They were hip. They were fun. They were quirky. They were just uniquely them. And I feel like they were not rewarded by the ISU. And I feel like this season, the ISU is saying, we're going to give you the Grand Prix final. We're going to give you the Worlds. Because you have, a, you have the best program, we think, that is being offered amongst those who are eligible for it. And it's going to be for your cumulative effort. Because honestly, I think because Chalk and Bait poo-pooed it because we all knew this was supposed to be their season 
um, to lose, and they lost it by having just less than good programs. They poo-pooed it. Then you had Popper and Paul that came out with good programs, and the IFC was like, well, here you go. For all the times we screwed you over, here you go. Congratulations. That's how I feel about it. Like both of their programs, rightfully they should have won here. Rightfully, they probably should win the Grand Prix Finals if they don't lose any levels. But I don't think this is the best work they've ever done. But still, I love this team, and I'm so happy to see them finally getting the recognition that they deserve. From the ice dance, we moved on to pairs. Again, pairs is the weakest discipline we currently have. But again, I am okay with that because it is a growth process. Honestly, the pair team that I was most excited to see here is the young Americans, um, Anastasia Smirnova and Danilo Sinisneja. I really feel like this pair is a world-class pair. I say give them four years. Their elements are already world-class. I think they need more exposure, more competition, probably some mental preparedness on how to compete on the senior level team. But everything that is required to make a world-class team, I feel like this young pair had. And they almost won the silver medal here, if not for the last lift in their in their long program. Had that lift gone through, they would have easily won the silver medal year. But unfortunately, they finished off the podium. Um, another team that I thought would be a contender for the gold, but really were just not, is the um, Georgian team of Anastasia Metakilna and Daniel Parkman. Again, this is another team that really has strong elements, but so far this season, they have yet to deliver two clean programs and really max their potential. I'm, I'm really wondering what is going on in the Georgian camp because a lot of their athletes, the men, the women, and now the pairs are all struggling this season. Um, you know, I, I'm seriously wondering what is going on with the Georgian team. Um, the Silver medal here was the German team of Alyssa Efanova and Ruben Belmont. They're a good team. They have good elements. I can't say there's anything about them that's amazing, that's wow, that I can really remember. But they're not an offen they're inoffensive, is what I will say about the German team. And the winner here was the Italian team. Lots of personality. Um, Rebecca Gilardi and Filippo Ambrosini. Lots of personality. Lots of ice presence. Just this is a team like you, they make you remember them because they're so vivacious, they're so emotive. Really fun pair to watch. Don't think they're technically at the level of some of the. Other international teams like the Japanese, the U.S., the Canadians, and we're not even going to talk about the Russians, but still a really fun pair to watch. Glad they made it to the Grand Prix final. And I'm like, good God, the Italians are really building themselves a comprehensive team for, you know, 2026 Milan. Like, the, the men are coming on strong. I stance. They have a good contender. Pairs now. We have, like, three Italian pairs teams that are building themselves up. If the Italian get a decent woman, then they are not in the conversation for that, you know, team medal. Re really nice to see. I, I love to see figure skating grow overall. And then we finally, I get to the women. I could have sworn, if anyone had asked me to bet, I could have sworn Luna Hendricks would have won this event from the short to the long. I was wrong. 
I was pleasantly surprised by this whole event. Just the fairness of the judging, the cleanness of the judging. I think this is the least politically inclined judging that I have seen in women in years. Um, some of these skaters didn't do as well as I was expecting. Like, um, for instance, the Georgian um, women, Anastasia um, Gabanova, I honestly thought she would win another bronze medal here. If not win a medal, I thought she would at least be in the top six. Last season, Gabanova was one of the most consistent skaters out there. The judges were not really going with her, but in terms of consistency, she was one of the most consistent skaters out there. That triple-triple had it at every competition. I don't know what's going on with her. I don't know what's going on with the Georgian team this year, but that her triple-triple failed her. I just... She just was not in the right frame of mind. Also, don't love her long program. I already mentioned that in my last video. Don't love her long program. And when she's when she's falling on the jumps to a program that's already not great, it just makes the whole situation that much worse. So instead of finishing six or on the podium, she was all the way in eighth place, which I'll be honest, was not something that I could have foreseen happening to Gabanova. Hopefully she'll get herself together and come, you know, European. And I have her on the podium for European. Come European, she'll get herself together and show a decent showing there. Um, another skater that didn't do so well was Brady Tunnell. I will be perfectly blunt. Brady Tunnell needs to sit out nationals. There is no reason for Brady Tunnell to go to U.S. nationals this year. She's obviously not healed. She's obviously still injured. These are not like world-class programs that have to be seen by the world. She's definitely in, not able to compete the at the technical level she's used to. And I feel like to go to nationals is to give the judges another opportunity to bury her. I say she skipped nationals, take some time, heal herself, then really make a comeback next year. If, if I'm her camp, we're going to just forego national. We're not going to get put on the world team anyways. What is the point? So we can go to four continent? Please. Brady, just sit this one out. Um, another, another rough outing here for Lindsay Thorngreen. I'm going to stick by my word. Long term for U.S. ladies, my money is on Lindsay Thorne Green. Unfortunately, in the short term, she is really just having a really difficult time. And a lot of that has to do with her adjusting to her body and her new, you know, and her, her new growth, um, which is perfectly natural. Aside from the physical aspect of it, I will also say it's a confident issue. And what I mean by that is every time Isabel Levito steps on the ice, she steps on the ice as if she is a national champion, as if she is a world medalist. There is this confidence about her that says, you will see me as a national champion. You will see me as a world medalist and you would score me as such. L like Isabel just has this confidence about her. Lindsay does not have that. But I still feel in the long run, if I had to bet on one of the U.S. ladies, I'm still willing to bet on Lindsay Thorne Green. I could be wrong, but that's where I'm willing to put my money. Um, then we had Madeline Chouzard. Nice outing. Nice outing. She wasn't great. She wasn't bad. She did most of her jumps. She stayed on her feet for most of it. She, she changed the dress. I wish she would go back to the other dress. I wish she would go back to the other dress. And I still wish she would take out all of the speaking part and just use the instrumental. I feel pretty, oh, so pretty. Oh my God. Can you imagine falling to that? I just feel like that. Really try to, God forbid, imagine it at world. And the Maria is screaming in the background. I feel pretty. You fall. Oh, so pretty. Pop, you fall. I feel pretty and witty. Plop, plop. You're falling. That is 
awful. So I wish she'd just take out take out the take out the, the speaking part and just keep the instrumental. And then we had Miss Rika Kihira. Good for you, Rika. Good for you. Good for you for taking the time to properly heal your body, for not pushing yourself when you are not ready, and for coming back at your own pace. I now believe that by the time 2026 Milan come, you might get that triple axel back. I now see the potential for it. Love the joy that I saw in you on the ice. Love the fact that your confidence is coming back. Love the fact that you did two clean program. Yes, technically they were not what you were used to, but this is a rebuilding process and it should not be sped up. It should not be burdensome. It should be done gradually, gently. And I'm so glad that your team understand that and that is how they're guiding you. And then Miss Mana Kawabe. So much better than her last Grand Prix outing. So much better than her last Grand Prix outing. Again, love that short program. That short program on her is everything. I love it. I still do not like the long program music choice. Again, I didn't like it when Hubbo and Danahue did it, and I don't like it now. But what I will say is, when she skates cleanly to that song, it is so much more enjoyable than when she is skating poorly to it. I will admit to that. But beautiful, two beautifully delivered program, and I was so happy to see it. And our silver medalist here was Luna Hendricks, who again, I would have bet good money would have been our winner. And what lost it for Luna was that single axle added on to a fall. And also the fact that the commentator, Mark, was telling us that she literally had nationals a week ago. Really? Really, Belgium? You, you really needed to have a national? Really? Really? You, you, you're one good skater. You wanted to tire her out before... She had to go to a Grand Prix International competition. Really? That was the in intelligent decision you guys came up with. So I don't know if it was exhaustion. I don't know if it was nerves. But this was not her best outing to date. Um, but she did enough. She did enough to combine get that silver medal, which means she automatically has a buy into the Grand Prix final. And our winner here, our winner here, our girl was finally getting her much deserved flower was my Mia Hara. Again, she wasn't perfect here. She was not perfect here. But she again did enough. She did enough in the short and in the free combined to win herself a gold medal. And I don't even think it's about the competition for my, I think we're rooting for her one because she's coming back from such, you know, an extreme medical condition. And to see her back, to see her healthy, to see her happy as human beings, we want to root for her. And then after what's happened the last six, six, six to four years where skaters are breaking down, where skaters are barely lasting two, three seasons, to have Mai, who's been around for two Olympic cycle and who's going to continue towards her third, as fans of the sport, it's the same reason why we are all rooting for Elizabetha Tomisheva. Because for us, champions are better than winners. Skaters whom we can grow with, whom we can learn their stories, their histories, who we can see them as human beings are so much more valuable to us than skaters who can do incredible feats for one or two seasons and then they disappear.
at least for me, that is what my, that is what Elisaveta, that's what all these skaters represent. And I am so, so very happy to see it. Overall, I was very, very happy with this competition. I was very happy with the fairness, the cleanliness of the judging. I just loved it. But what about you guys? What did you guys think of the competition? Let me know in the comments below.